Hey folks, my name's Kevin and it's time for some absolutely wild, wild and really, really different knife nerdery. This knife is so different from the kind of stuff I normally have on my channel, so different from the kind of stuff that I have in my collection for sure. And that is exactly why my friend sent this along. What is this? So this is a Strider MSC partially serrated grid pattern Trisula NMG Gunner Grip Hybrid SNG. That is the single most mouthful name I have ever experienced on a knife. We're going to unpack what all of those terms mean and kind of use that as a framing device through this video to talk about all the little things about this that make this legitimately a really interesting knife. Like I said, a friend sent this along because he knew this is the kind of thing that I would just never ever experience on my own. And I love that. I've had a couple of friends do that in the past, send me things that are so outside my comfort zone. I really adore these kinds of experiences because for one, like I said, I would never ever experience this otherwise. But for two, it really kind of forces me to take a step back and appreciate knives for things outside of what I normally look for. Because this is so not a knife I would normally go for. And it's got a bunch of qualities that I don't want in a knife. But this is still a fascinating and really, really cool knife. So I want to <laughs> I want to thank my friend for sending this along. And uh, yeah, also, I'm not at all a strider expert or historian so all of the information about what those terms mean in context or anything like that came from my friend who sent this and also my friend nick rogers he's a big strider guy and so he helped me unpack a lot of these words so let's get started right off the bat i said this is from strider knives so Strider Knives was founded, I think, in the early 90s, like 92 or something like that. And I think it was originally, maybe he came on later, but I think it was originally a, part of a partnership between Mick Strider and a guy named Dwayne Dwyer. Um, they eventually split ways at some point, but Mick Strider has continued growing this company. And for a long time, Strider has been known as, as part of this, what people would call like the holy trinity of American production knives. So what that's talking about is... Uh, Chris Reeves Knives, Hinderer, and Strider. And for years, many, 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 many years, and even still kind of today, those are the big three makers that are making high-end, overbuilt, tactical production knives in the United States. And of course, CRK is much more in the kind of refined looking than those, but they're still overbuilt tanky knives. Strider has never really been on my radar. I mean, I always knew they existed, but they, I was never really interested in them because when they talk about tactical, they really do mean it in that kind of self-defense and combat perspective. And that is very much not an interest of mine. If that's relevant in your actual life, more power to you, great, I love it. It's not relevant to mine, so it's not something that I think about. But that is a really big focus of a lot of the elements of what's going on here. I'm not gonna go into Strider's history. I know there's controversy there. I don't care, it's not the point of this video whatsoever. Um, let's just get going. So the first term is uh, MSC, so Mick Strider Customs. So that makes this a full custom, hand ground, hand assembled, hand tuned, uh, supposedly different hardware than production versions, slightly different handles and stuff like that. And so that's to differentiate this from uh, Strider's production knives, but also from their performance series. As I understand it, those are hand fit, but typically do not have a hand ground blade. But this one is a full on Strider custom. And like I said, showed a moment ago, you can see right there, I actually really like this touch. It's, this is like a literal handwritten, like scraped in. I don't know if that's maybe done with a, no, it doesn't look like it's done with a Dremel. I don't know how he did this, honestly, because it's very crisp and clean, but that is his literal signature right there. And as a maker's Marco, I think that's really cool. I also really like that it's down here and not marring up this blade in some way, because this is such an incredibly visual, cool looking blade. And so I love, I love that it doesn't have that kind of scrawled across it in some weird space. Next up, let's talk about the blade. This is so obviously one of the most uh, striking elements. A lot about this knife is pretty striking, but this is such an incredibly striking blade. And what we're gonna get to is a couple of terms here. So this is where we get the partially serrated, the grid pattern, the trisula, and the nightmare grind. So let's talk what each of those are. This is partially serrated, but in the most partial way possible, there are literally two serrations on this. And these serrations, man, if you look, these are definitely hand done. You can really, really tell, but they're so funny. Like, okay, just taking a step back, this blade looks so much like a goblin's face to me. Like this looks like a long hooked nose. There's an eye and these are its little tiny teeth at the back. I find this very, very honestly funny looking, but I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but this is just a, like a, 
a really kind of wild, wicked looking knife. And it really, really looks like a face to me. In particular, I think this knife looks like a goblin shark. If you're not familiar with those are, I'll pop in a picture. That's definitely the spirit animal in this knife. And so the serrations here are just these kind of adorable little, wicked little teeth. <laughs> I know adorable and wicked back to back is a weird phrase, but isn't that fun? So next up we have this thing at the top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that out of the way. This is, uh, I think, I'm, I'm assuming this is pronounced trisula. It's T-R-I-S-U-L-A. I'm told that this is also called a bacon scoop. This is used in a very particular tactic in self-defense or combat. And uh, I'm not gonna describe that in this video. If you want to Google that, fair warning, it's straight out of some horror movie shit. It's, it's kind of gross. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is an asymmetric scallop at the top and Boy, does it just add to the wild, wild aesthetic of this knife. Like there's just this huge chunk coming out right there. And everything else about this is a pretty symmetric grind, but that, wow. And that is not part of what makes this an NMG or nightmare grind. Although honestly, I think that definitely contributes to the kind of nightmarish aspect of this. The nightmare grind is apparently these hand ground and they vary from knife to knife in terms of uh, size, displacement, how, how like proportions, how depth, but it's this combination of a hollow grind right here and then a much shorter flat grind at the top with the full thickness up to the tip. And this, man, this is a wild looking knife. This is so much of what makes this a kind of modern sculptural art look to me. So I know a lot of people look at this and especially with a name like Nightmare Grind, this is the kind of thing where this is meant to look scary and intimidating and intense. Now, functionally, this is meant to have strength up here. This is meant to be like a piercing tip with a lot of uh, strength that's not gonna crack. This is meant to be kind of a slicing part back here. Like there's functional aspect to this, but this, especially with that name, is clearly meant to look scary. But a lot of this to me looks like modern art. Like this looks like the kind of lines you find in some kind of wild, crazy sculpture. And from that perspective, this is beautiful. Like this is a really cool sculptural blade. Now I do wanna kind of take a step back there and the name Nightmare Grind, I think it is super apt, but also something that I really, I, I don't know, I kind of doubt, but I really wonder whether or not Mick Strider is saying that with any kind of a level of like self-awareness that that's kind of funny. Like this is some horror movie shit. And, but like horror movies often have a comedic element. They're usually over the top in a way that is intentionally over the top to kind of lighten the mood. And calling this a nightmare grind to me, that name, it's comical. I think it's, I love it. Like I think it's it's super appropriate, but it is evocative of, of like, you know, Edward Scissorhands-y, Tim burton -y kind of horror movies. And I just, I, yeah, I, I really, I really am trying hard. I hope if there are some diehard starter fans watching this that I'm not saying this, any of this in a, in a pejorative derogatory way. I'm not trying to say that this is a comical knife and like I'm laughing at it way. I think it's delightful <laughs> that this is called a nightmare grind, but I also inherently find that a little bit funny in, in a way that's just fun. <laughs> and so I have no idea if that's, if there's any kind of irony in that whatsoever, or if this is very much just like nightmare grind. <laughs> But I do think it's a very appropriate name. Now, the last part of this is this grid pattern. What I'm told is that this is something that was older that they brought back fairly recently. And it's just this kind of laser pattern that's done in the knife. If you look at it, it appears as if there was a kind of a, a dark blast finish of some kind underneath. And then they did this laser grid on top. And the laser, if you look at the, the grid pattern, it's flowing, like it's not just straight lines. There's curves down here and it changes the aesthetic of this knife in a way that makes it, it look even more three-dimensional than it is. That's part of what makes this blade so mesmerizing is that there's so many curves and shapes to this already, but then this grid pattern kind of boggles and baffles your mind and, and tricks it into thinking that there are even more curved shapes on here than it looks like originally. And that is so freaking neat. It's also, honestly, part of the nightmare aspect to me. Because a lot of what nightmares are is this kind of dream logic distortion of reality. So this having this kind of flowing, undulating, warped quality to the aesthetic is so, so nightmare. That's perfect. I, I really think that is a perfect name for this blade. I just find it fun in a way that's kind of lighthearted too. You can see at the top of this blade that we have um, 
unsurprisingly very aggressive gym. This is the kind of gym that I don't like, but this knife, all of the design of this whole SNG model. Oh, I should have said that at the beginning. The SNG itself is the model name, and that is, um, it's S lowercase n g, so like S and G, because so in general, these, these names come from like named after military people of some kind, and it's usually kept pretty secret. But at some point, the origin of this name came out. And apparently this name is, knife is named for Randy Sugheart and Gary Gordon, who are uh, from the Battle of Mogadishu as depicted in the movie Black Hawk Down. I haven't seen that movie in a really long time. I don't know who those people are. I don't know what that battle is. I'm not a military person at all, but that's apparently where this name comes from. And so this just goes in line with the whole military aspect of this. And I was talking about the jimping here. Um, and this is the kind of knife that's meant to be worn with like fighting gloves of some kind, or, you know, some kind of outdoor thing. And you're meant to have a very secure grip. And I, uh, I don't like jimping like this, but honestly, as jimping like this goes, this isn't the worst for me. The reason why I typically don't like jimping of this nature is because the wide and deep spacing here means that it's usually the kind of thing that if I push a lot of force down on this, it my finger dips down so deep into these scallops of the jimping that, it, that it's not comfortable. It's extremely grippy, so that's the whole point, but it's not comfortable for me. But this one, the way that these top parts are as flat and as wide as they are, it actually gives you a pretty solid surface to push on. So as big chunky jimping goes, I actually don't mind this that much. You'll find similar jimping at the back back here. We'll talk about that when we get back to the handles, but you do see that this extends onto the blade and that's pretty cool. It's the same pattern and it does flow perfectly like these line up right there. I like little details like that a lot. As far as sharpening goes, this is interesting. So this is um, this is uh, basically just a perfectly flat edge. And so you could just treat this as a flat, uh, like like you would any other kind of Warncliffe and on a, on a uh, sharpening stone. Um, and these little serrations, you can sharpen serrations, but basically this serration here is going to be effectively your sharpening toil because that's what you're gonna be sharpening up to. This notch right here is interesting. We'll talk about that in just a second, but it's not anything to do with sharpening toil and it's also not like a finger grip of any kind. This right here is a finger toil. And so you, I mean, in my tiny little fingers, I could hold it like that if I really wanted to, but we'll talk about why this is here in just a moment. It's just kind of fun looking in the meantime. Now, there is this big pill-shaped cutout right here. You might've noticed at the start of this video that I slow rolled this open. And the reality is, is that I cannot flick this. I have tried numerous times and just overall tightness and everything, I'm not about to adjust this. We'll talk about that later when we get to the handles. But in general, um, I can't flick this knife, but it's really easy to slow roll. And part of what makes that easy is that the, the crisp corners here, they're not the most comfortable thing in the world. But again, this is meant to be the kind of thing that gives you unambiguous grip in opening so that you don't possibly mess up. And so these crisp corners really lock onto your finger like that and make sure that you are stuck in that entire way. Okay, let's move back and let's look at these handles. And this is where we're gonna go our last two keyword terms. Let's start with the fact that this is a hybrid. Now, some of these MSCs have a full titanium handle, but this one is a hybrid of two different materials. In this case, titanium for the lock side and G10 for the show side. Now, this titanium lock side here has been heat anodized tiger striped. Now, this is basically done by taking a tiny little pencil torch and moving it back and forth. And they did a really, really nice job here of keeping these straight, even, consistently spaced. I think it looks really, really nice. And it's the kind of thing where it's really clean, but not so clean that you can still tell this is hand done. I think one of the ways that you can tell that this is really nicely done is the fact that the clip, even though the clip is this like contoured three-dimensional surface, the lines here are just as evenly striped and they line up really well with the handle. Like that's really pretty hard to make look like it fits in well, and they did a great, great job with that. While we're looking at the clip, there's actually a really interesting and pragmatic, simple way that they're going about this. There's a single screw at the top, and then the top has been bent down and goes into a hole right here. And that's what prevents it from moving side to side. Like that's really, really simple, but effective. Now coming back over, like I said, this is now a hybrid between titanium and G10. I was told that these hybrid ones is kind of a way of making a more affordable option that they cost less than the full titanium ones. But honestly, the fact that this is G10 or specifically because they used a striped G10 makes this so, so much cooler looking. Not only do you get the cool color, like this bright orange thing, but it allows 
the really, really neat textural pattern that's happening right here. And that's where our last keyword comes in. This is the gunner grip. This grip texture is super grippy, really, really aggressive. Not only are these these dimpled scallops throughout, but then the peaks right in between all of these are like these little sharp diamonds. It's like a little tiny pyramid pattern at the top. And this is uh, in my wimpy keyboard finger hands, this is a very aggressive grip that is not the most comfortable thing in the world. But again, this is designed to give you unambiguous traction in a life or death situation. And for that, great. It's doing a great, great job. For my everyday EDC use, I don't know if anyone really EDC this knife, but my EDC use, this is way more aggressive than I would actually want. But it does look so cool. Like just visually, look how cool this looks. Now, how is it doing this? Why does it have this kind of undulating quality? That, okay. So the fact that there are these dimples here means that the, like, the depth of them is changing as you go through each of those dimples. And then, and then, since the overall knife is contoured, the dimples that are down here are gonna go deeper into this material than the dimples that are up at this thicker spot. They're, they're, those are coming plunging down further than the ones at the top. And because this is a layered material here, that's how you get some of these dipping down into different layers than others. And so some of these come and go through an orange at the top and then a black layer and then end with orange in the middle. Some of these come down deep enough that they're only going through that orange layer. Some of them have black in the middle instead of orange. And it's all about how far they are down. And what this looks like to me is like a comic book halftone pattern. If you're not familiar with what that is, when people want to make a gradient pattern, but they want to only use two colors, if you're trying to do like screen printing, there's a technique called halftone similar to screen tones and things like that. But in halftones, you have dots of a solid color, but you change the size and spacing of those dots to make it look visually to your eye like a smooth gradient. And that's what you have here. You have tiny little dots transitioning into larger and larger and larger and larger dots until they finally fill the entire thing. And then there's tiny little dots that get bigger and bigger. And it gives you this really cool, like wavy three-dimensional quality. And it is, it is three-dimensional, but it looks even more three-dimensional than it is. And so when you combine that with that same kind of, uh, mind warping texture up here, this knife is just so nightmare logic, trippy, mind warping looking. It is so cool looking. I think the aesthetics of this knife is just so incredibly impressive. It's not the kind of thing I would normally go for, but like to me, this is a perfect Halloween knife. I don't want a Halloween decoration all the time, but for spooky season, this is so perfect. Now let's move back to the handles and talk about just one of the things that's really neat about this knife in terms of how like uh, the basically how stop pins work. So we've got these two external stop pins right here. And in the open position, they are resting into these little notches at the front right there. So that's making contact right there and making it so you can't open the knife anymore. But in the closed position, it looks like they're touching. It's really, really close, but they're not actually touching. There's a little gap right there. And so what is the stop pin in the closed position? Well, it turns out it's this mono block backspacer. So on this knife, the backspacer is integrated into the show side handle. This isn't a full integral, but the backspacer has been integrated into one of the two pieces. And it's uh, a really cool way of making the knife much more rigid and strong because this is all one piece. There's no way that this can shift along any of those sides. You're not relying on the screws to hold it in the back. This is all one piece, but it's a very expensive way of doing it because you have to start with one whole thick piece of material that's this big and then mill out, basically throw away the vast majority of that material. And so you don't see it very often. Like I said, it's sometimes called a monoblock construction. It's a really, really neat technique. But one of the things that they're doing here that I, I've only ever seen maybe like once ever is the backspacer itself is the stop pin. If you look down in here, there is this little hump right here. So it goes like flat and then it humps down. And partly what that hump is allowing them to do is pass this screw through. So they're making it thicker so that that screw has space to go through. But that hump is acting as the backspacer. If you look at where that's contacting in close position, it's actually hitting right here. It's hard to see, but there's a little tiny wear spot right there from where it folds in, follow that path, whoop, and hits that backspacer. I've never seen anyone do that. That is really, really cool. And that is why this last part here is not sharpened. There's, there's only two serrations instead of three because it's this spot right there that is making the contact with that integrated stop pin backspacer hybrid thing. How cool is that? That's just really, really neat.
while we're back here, the lanyard hole is down here. And it's, uh, I'm not surprised that there's a lanyard on this knife because, you know, in in these like life or death situations, I'm, I can see someone wanting to have something they could tug on in some reason. I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to go into it. Maybe you'd want to put like a strap that goes on your, who knows. Um, but what's interesting is the placement down here is very intentional. It's not along the top. It's at the bottom. And the reason is because this is, again, meant for kind of a combat grip. That's the whole point of this back swedge back here and why there is such strong traction. This is meant for your thumb. And so if there was a lanyard right here, you'd be in the way. You know, you'd be trying to wrap your thumb around it and be getting caught up in stuff. And so instead, they put the lanyard in the only available space right there. Now, there is an interesting aspect. If you look at this, yeah, do you see that? The blade ever so slightly enters that hole. So uh, what that says to me is that under normal circumstances, I'm sure it's fine. But if you were to very tightly pull the cord against this edge and wiggle it back and forth a whole bunch over and over and over, and over again, you probably could eventually cut through your lanyard by just having that tiny little bit exposed. I don't know, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it is, I, I imagine that that is not exactly a desirable or intentional thing. Now I mentioned this jimping back here. It is the same style of jimping that's up here on the blade. And so it is very aggressive, but because the spacing is as wide as it is, it's actually still pretty comfortable to push on. Now I've said to some friends recently, just, just recently in conversation, that this is a grip that I would never personally ever, ever, ever find myself holding a knife. I have occasionally held knives like this to kind of stab into like a bag of soil in my backyard and then cut through, but I would never do it in reverse and push through. It just, I don't know, it does not occur to me. So this is the kind of thing that to me, this would add uh, grip for me in like, uh, like this kind of really far choked back pinch grip. And since this is a Warncliffe knife, I could kind of see doing this. In this grip, this is resting right here, and then your finger's laying along this jimping here. And so this is actually really, really locked in. If for some reason you need to be doing a forward pressure, usually in utility cuts, you're kind of pulling backward. But if you ever had to do forward pressure on this, man, can you put a lot of force against this wedge and your hand is locked in absolutely everywhere. Now, going along with this lanyard hole being a hole through, there is another really cool hole through this knife. Look at that. Isn't that neat? It's pretty rare to find this uh, on knives, a completely pass-through pivot. And usually the way these work and the way this one works is that this is actually technically a hex screw. At first glance, it looks like it's just completely impossible to take this off, but that is a hex screw. My understanding is that this is a 3 16th hex. And I, I believe, I haven't tried this, but I believe that this is the kind of thing where you need two. I don't think either side of this is stuck in. So you would need two different 3 16 hex screws in order to be able to adjust this pivot. Now, the only other thing that we haven't talked about yet is this here. This is a hinderer style over travel stop slash lock bar stabilizer. So I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that's the case. I haven't taken this off, but I believe that's what's going on here. What that would mean is that this uh, slot here that goes around it is not cut all the way through. And so this lock bar, yeah, you can see on the back that it goes all the way down. You probably can't with the lighting. Um, but what that means is that there is titanium along the back of this. And so if you try to push this over, it's going to abut against this little round spacer here and make it so you can't push it over any further. And it's put all the way far back here. That way it can act as a lock bar stabilizer, meaning that if you're trying to push downward, it's, it's able to hit into this. Uh, Hinderer talked through the placement of this. Uh, there are a lot of people who have pointed out that if you have your stabilizer all the way back here, that there's still a really long lever arm distance and this can still kind of flex downward. Um, the reason why it has to be back here is because if you move it further forward, then as the lock bar moves over out of the way, since this doesn't go very far down, like the thickness of this disc is like relatively thin, as the lock bar goes over to the side to engage, it's no longer actually going to be overlapping on that little thing. And so if you push it down, it's just going to slide down behind it. And so there's a good reason why it has to be at the back. And it's just one of those kind of trade-offs that you have to make. But it's not surprising at all to find this kind of thing on a really beefy knife. That's, you know, the kind of you know thing where in the moment, in the heat of combat or whatever, that you would maybe have the adrenaline to push this over so you want the lock bar and then you might squeeze ridiculously hard and you don't want that to flex and mess up your lock up in some way. So it's not surprising to find that on a knife like this that's kind of designed for this purpose. Okay, let's talk about my final thoughts on this knife. And from a functional perspective, this is a thick blade. It's got very aggressive texture. It's got aggressive jimping. It's got all sorts of shapes and stuff like that that make this not super me. Now, as a blade shape, this is actually a pretty cool Warncliffe, and you could probably do some really nice utility cuts with this. It's not really meant for EDC, though. This is a knife that's kind of built, if you were to actually use it for its purpose, 
is like a combat-y kind of knife. So this is completely outside of my personal use case. I will never need a knife like this, so I'm never really gonna buy a knife like this. But from an aesthetic standpoint, look how freaking cool it is. I'm filming this right now in October and Halloween's just around the corner. And this is honestly, especially with this orange and black color scheme, this is the perfect Halloween knife. This looks so much like something out of Nightmare Before Christmas, something Tim Burton-y. I think it is just so fun. And I know that a lot of Strider people are really serious about this. And I hope, I hope some of those people also find this just fun in that kind of lighthearted way that I do, because this is the kind of knife that if you take that step back and look at this as just like a art piece, it is delightful. So huge, huge thank you to my friend for sending this along. And thank you to my friend Nick for helping me figure out a lot of those terms. And yeah, in general, <laughs> I think this has been fascinating. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time.